Adam, a warm welcome to New Road. What made you decide to choose Worcestershire as your new county? Yeah, thanks very much. I think um, sort of the initial attraction probably came from the opportunities in, in Red Bull that I felt were, were pretty limited and it's been a frustrating couple of years in terms of um, Red Bull stuff at, at Warwickshire. So um, I'm still striving to be the best player that I can be in, in terms of an all-round format player and um, I saw the, the likelihood of that um, being even better, hopefully making a move to Worcestershire. How excited are you about this new chapter in your career? Yeah, it certainly is a new chapter. Um, it's one that you know I've been very excited about for, for a while now, a good couple of months. And it um, seems a bit strange at the moment because you know, a few months away this winter, but hopefully when I get back, um, everything will sort of start to sink in and start to look ahead into the summer. Did you feel the time was right for a new challenge? Yeah, definitely. I think I've um, been kind of thinking about it for a while, to be honest with you. And, you know, the right opportunity hadn't necessarily come up and I was still really enjoying my time at Warwickshire so um, I mean it was, a, it was a difficult decision to leave I'm not going to lie about that but um, you know we're here now made the decision got the opportunity in front of me so I just got, got to look forward. Now obviously Ed Pollock was a, a teammate of yours for several years at Warwick yeah. did you speak to him before making the move? Yeah Polly's a really good friend of mine he is, uh, his family live in the village next door to me so um, when our schedules allow, we spend a bit of time together, go for a few coffees and play a bit of golf. So um, we definitely spent a bit of time thinking it over and chatting things through and me asking a few questions of him. Um, but he was um, really good with uh, that whole decision making process and, and helped me a lot. So yeah. You would have been impressed with the way he settled in at uh, Worcestershire. Yeah, of course. But I, it wasn't really a surprise to me. You know, I've, been, I've played him with him for a few years now. and. Um, I've seen how dangerous he can be in Red Bull cricket. Obviously, there was a bit of a uh, stigma around him of just being a white white ball player. But um, you know, I played in, in Red Bull four day cricket with him in the second team, and I've seen how destructive he can be. So, to him to get the opportunities to come here and play Red Bull cricket um, and put in the performances that um, a lot of guys know he can, it wasn't really a surprise to me. So, just really happy for him. As you said, that's one of the reasons he came here to play Red Bull cricket. That clearly is a goal for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I said it, I said it just a second ago. My ambition is still to be try and be the best all-round player I can be. I've got no interest in going down um, a one-format route at the moment. Um, and for me to continue to be or strive to be the best player I can be, that's spending as much time as I can in the middle. Whether it doesn't matter what colour the ball is. Um, you know, I'm still spending time out there and um, yeah. Now obviously last year in the Blast you had a fantastic year, third highest scorer in the competition, a strike rate of 161. Although you want to play red ball cricket you clearly love and can make a big mark in the white ball as well. Yeah I think um, probably my natural game is um, inclined more towards white ball cricket but um, being a, probably a bit more of an aggressive player but I think um, after you know the last 12 months of four-day cricket and even looking into test cricket and how that's sort of evolving um, you know the guys like Ben Stokes, Bairstow, they were pretty aggressive players um, it's just a case of trying to reel the game and the game plan in fractionally um, and understand different types of scenarios in, um, in games um, and read those moments and then putting into place your aggression and your natural flair um, when the when the situation allows it, so um, yeah, I'll be hoping to, to do a little, little bit more of that this this coming summer. You would have obviously seen from just up the road at Edge of Aston the success that Worcester have had in the Blast 2018. They won it 2019. They were runners up. Do you think you can help them to get back to those glory days again? Yeah, I think um, I think there's absolutely no reason why you can't. You know, last year in in the Reb, in the White Bull stuff was a little bit a tough year for, for Worcester, but. Um, I think it's really important so everyone reflects on that and um, you know we put in place the things that we potentially see um, room for improvement um, and then get back to you know where we where we know we can be. You've obviously played in the New Zealand Super Smash, the Caribbean Premier League and the 100. How much of playing in all those different tournaments helped with your development? Yeah I think so from a you know from a player's point of view you want to try and expose yourself to as Many different environments and um, conditions as possible, and like you said, all those all those environments that you just mentioned in terms of those different competitions are all very different. So learning to adapt as quickly as possible is really important. And if you can keep adding tools um, to your bag as a player, you know you become more of an all-round individual and cricketer. So um, yeah, hopefully that's only beneficial. 
And now you've got another big tournament to look forward to this winter, the Big Bash League. I mean, how much are you looking forward to that and working with Jason Gillespie? Yeah, absolutely. It's been, uh, I've done a few um, sort of stints over in Adelaide in South Australia and um, right from a young age, my first time over there when I was sort of 18, it's always been a, a big ambition of mine. It's kind of been on the, on the goal list um, to, to play in the Big Bash. Um, so when that opportunity came round, um, myself and my family were absolutely over the moon and um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a summer down under that I'm really, really excited for. You were born on the Isle of Wight, you went to school there. Did that make it tougher to become a professional cricketer, to, to get that breakthrough? Because there haven't been that many players who come from the Isle of Wight. I mean, Danny Briggs is one, obviously. Yeah. Um, I suppose looking at it, it was, it, was, um, it was tough at times, but I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful and fortunate that I come from a, a really supportive family and, you know, they, they made it. Um, really possible. I was travelling over to, to Hampshire at the Rose Bowl at the time, it's now the Aegeus Bowl, you know, three times a week for training and um, they were driving me around all over the country as I'm sure many parents can relate mm. to uh, for age group cricket. Um, so yeah, very fortunate in terms of that. Um, but we also had a very great setup. Um, we had an indoor school built at Ventnor um, which allowed a lot of young guys to, um, you know, develop their cricket. So I suppose looking back uh, it's a slightly different journey, but it's not one that I'd ever change. You eventually signed for Somerset. How did that breakthrough into the professional game come about? Yeah, so uh, at the age of 19, I moved to London to play on the MCC and Cricketers for a couple of years. Mm. I did three years there, um, which again was fantastic. I probably wasn't ready to break into the professional environment, probably until my last year of the MCC and Cricketers, so I would have been around 21. Um, and it wasn't then until I started understanding a bit about my game and myself as a player um, and putting some good numbers on the board. Um, and off the back of that, got a trial with Somerset for a couple of months, mm. um, did well there. And, and um, yeah, they offered me a, a year and a half contract from that point on. So that's how that, that came around. You moved to Edgebaston eventually, moved to Warwickshire, and then you got your maiden first class 100 against Nottinghamshire in 2019. That must have been a very special moment, even though it lasted over three days. Yeah, it was, it was quite weather dependent, that one. It, it sort of um, on and off the pitch for, for a couple of days with light and rain. And um, yeah, it was a really special moment, to be honest. So I look back on that with great fondness. And um, it was a bit, bit of a long time coming, I suppose, in terms of like when I made my debut, it was a little bit later than you probably associate with most professional cricketers. But again, that was something on my goal list. and. Um, it was a really special moment, but hopefully I can recreate a few more of those in a, in a Worcester show over the coming years. Who were your sort of um, cricketing heroes and biggest influences when you were sort of growing up, developing as a player? Yeah, so um, yeah, Kevin Peaton would, would, be a, would be an obvious one. I used to love watching him bat. I used to love watching his presence and his aura at the crease and how he took the game to the opposition, um, sort of no matter the situation. Jack Callis again, I used to do a bit of bowling when I was a bit younger as an all-rounder, so um, I always used to look up to him. Again, just loved his presence and his calm demeanour and how he could always influence the game. And the other one would be A.B. de Villiers. Um, you know, his, his innovation, um, his composure under pressure, and he always looked to me from the outside that, you know, he just had everything under control and I, I really love that about him. Will you have the opportunity to practice and meet up with your new teammates before you head abroad? Yeah, so uh, I think officially we're all back in uh, on the 14th of November. Um, so I'll, I'll probably spend a week with them then doing some fitness testing and maybe a bit of batting. Um, but I'm in sort of starting from next week in preparation for going away it's in the middle of November. So um, I'm sure a few of the guys will be knocking around. I've seen a few of them in the gym this week. So um, yeah, just a, a case of um, getting in the environment where you know we're no longer enemies we're now teammates and trying to break that barrier down but it's all good fun you're obviously initially here for three years hopefully obviously a lot longer mm. what would you have liked to have achieved what goals by the end of that first three years sure. yeah so i think you know i don't see any reason why we can't get back into silverware contention for, for the white ball cricket um obviously there's a with the stuff going on in the hundred it's slightly different teams in terms of guys going out um, but in terms of the white ball T20 blast you know I don't see any reason why we can't compete at finals day um, in the coming years uh, and then I think in the Red Bull stuff you know um, getting back into Division 1 and securing status in Division 1 and competing in that league 
I think will be a really great achievement because it's it's really tough cricket. Um, and, you know, it's it's really hard to get out of Div Two already, but to stay in Div One is is hard work. So if we can stay and compete in Div One, I mean, that's all a long way away. We've got you know a lot of work to do before that. Um, but I think I don't see any reason why that shouldn't be an ambition of the club. Well, thank you for speaking to us, Adam, and all the best for the next three years at Worcestershire. Thank you very much.